Hello guys, in today's tutorial, I'm going to cover the basics of tooltips and some examples of how you can use the tooltips. If you're interested in this topic, please continue watching. Alright, welcome back. So, tooltip displays information just like a message box but in a smaller window uh, which looks more like a bubble and it does not pause the script when it is shown on the screen. There is not much to go through for tooltips so this tutorial will be very quick. Okay, now let's observe what tooltips syntax is like. Tooltip syntax looks like this and the first parameter is text which is the text you want to put in the tooltip and then followed by the x coordinate and y coordinate uh, for the position of the of the tooltip and then which tooltip which represents which number of tooltip you're going to display the text to which I'm going to explain in a second. Now tooltip and hello is the most basic form of tooltip but you need to put in a sleep command here because otherwise what's going to happen is when the script ends if I run the script when the script ends the tooltip is going to disappear so you can either put a uh, a sleep here or if you have a lot of other lines of codes down here then the tooltip is showing going to show up until all the lines of codes are, are run and the script has ended so for demonstration purposes I'm just going to put a sleep of two seconds to show you that um, this tooltip containing this text will show up for two seconds if I go ahead and run the script like that now if you want to uh, write multi-line tooltip, uh, it's, it's pretty simple. You just go uh, backtick and and hello, how are you? If I go ahead and run this script, I will get the multi-line tooltip. And if you want to override the old tooltip, this is the way to delete the previous tooltip. So if I go ahead and copy the sleep command down here it's going to show this tooltip for two seconds and then it's going to it's going to end it let me just put a message box ended and by the time uh, four seconds have passed after I ran the script it will show me the message box that says ended so two seconds for the first tooltip and the third line removes the tooltip altogether and then two seconds later I see this message box if you want to override the old tooltip, the first tooltip by another tooltip, then this is the way to do it. If I run it, the first tooltip will show for two seconds. The second tooltip would override the old tooltip um, after the two seconds, and then I get the message box that says ended. Now this tooltip is still showing because the message box has paused the script. The script hasn't ended yet, but if I press this, it's going to remove the tooltip from the display as well. Now. If you want to permanently display the tooltip on the screen, then this is the way to do it. Put in persistent. Persistent means you you want to persistently run the script so you don't end it after you meet the last line of the script. So I'm just going to put hello, and if I run this, it's going to it's going to show me that tooltip, and this tooltip is not to, not going to go away until I force close this script by going to my tray icon right click on the auto hockey script and exit out from the script or if you have a hotkey for example this is a hotkey to exit the script if I run it let me put in single instance force so I don't get that warning message asking me uh, whether I want to terminate the old script now so I've got the tooltip showing up and this isn't going away because I have a hotkey which makes the script persistent by default and then if I press exit then this should go away like that. Now if you want to display the tooltip uh, for amount of period without using the sleep because sometimes you don't want to uh, place a sleep command because sleep command is going to put a break on the script for the specified amount of time what you can do is I'm just going to make this into a persistent script and display your tooltip this tooltip will be turned off in three seconds and I'm going to set a timer of a random label name my label 
and put 3000 milliseconds and then put a return here and then create a label and tooltip the tooltip command without any text that will um, remove the old tooltip and set the timer back to off okay so if I save this and run it I will see the tooltip showing up for three seconds and three seconds later the tooltip will be uh, gone all right let's move on to the next parameters x and y which represents the x and y coordinate of the tooltip to position the tooltip and because you're dealing with x and y coordinates you need to set up code mode of tooltip to screen um, you can obviously leave this out or set it to other other um, setup other than the screen if you comment it out and if you don't put it in any code mode then the tooltip is going to be placed relative to the active window by default so let me just demonstrate to you by creating a tooltip of hello there and x a uh, 100 for x and a 100 for y and put a sleep of two seconds now what this is going to do is it's going to show the tooltip 100 pixels to the right from the top left hand corner of the active window and 100 pixels to the bottom so it's going to show up around here so if i go ahead and run the script you see the tooltip showing up 100 pixel to the right and 100 pixel to the bottom from the top left hand corner of the active window so if i unminimize this window uh, move it around to another position and then run the run the script again it's going to show the tooltip 100 pixels and 100 pixels to the right and bottom from the top left hand corner of the active window so if i turn the code mode or tooltip to screen uh, what this is going to do is it's going to show up the tooltip from the top left hand corner of the screen so there you go so you get that tooltip showing up there and that's how you position your tooltip and the last parameter we have is which tooltip and with which tooltip uh, let me just show you an example um, you can create multiple tooltips tool pretty much so by specifying what tooltip you want to use so tooltip one is going to be the default option so let me just skip all the x and y coordinates to show the tooltip around the position of my mouse cursor and then if you put one which is the default option this is the same as putting putting nothing all right so by default one will be selected and then let me switch this text to two and then if you put two here this is going to be tooltip two and three it's going to be tooltip three and four, tooltip four, five, and tooltip five. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to also override the third tooltip. Let me call it tooltip three override, and then uh, use the third tooltip. So what this is going to do is it's going to show me all these tooltips, and then immediately it will override the third tooltip with a new text that says tooltip 3 override so let me go ahead and save this and run it and I'll see all these tooltips showing up stacked against each other and if I move them out tooltip 3 override so I've got tooltip 1 that says default 2 3 which is overridden by tooltip 3 override tooltip 4 tooltip 5 okay so let me show you just uh, another example which uses a loop 20 um, you can create up to 20 uh, tooltips so I'm gonna create 20 tooltips by using a loop and what I'm gonna do is I'm going to name them tooltip 1 to 20 by using the a index variable within the loop and I'm going to change the vary the position of the tooltip by 50 pixels so i'm just gonna add the formula in inside my parameters like that and then use the a index 
number to represent the, the tooltip number. So if I go ahead and run this, actually before I run it, let me explain what happened. Um, so I've got the tooltip command and then the text which uses a index, which is going to be the um, the iteration of the loop. So the first iteration will have an a index of one, the second will have an a index of two, and and so on and so forth. And then use that value to to be multiplied by 50 pixels to position the tooltip relative to the screen. Code mode tooltip screen, and then um, and then in the last parameter, I'm going to also provide the A index number to represent which tooltip I'm going to use. So if I save this and run it, I should be seeing like that 20 tooltips, uh, which uh, the positions of which should be offset by 50 pixels to the right and 50 pixels to the bottom. So there you go. Let me exit out of this script by pressing the exit hotkey. By the way, uh, when you have tooltips like this, you can't really just do a, a left mouse click to drag them uh, to reposition these tooltips. There is a script that I'm using to specifically move any window by pressing the Alt key and the left mouse key to drag and, and reposition these uh, tooltips. And not just the tooltips, um, a lot of other windows as well. Now, I have that script saved. Let me get out of this script in my on my website if you go to juho-lee.com and go to archive click the auto hockey icon i think i have it saved uh speed up speeding up auto hockey scripts there you go i think here and then there's a script that uses win move there we go all right so it's yeah it's this one so this example from here to there is the script that moves any window um, by pressing the hotkey that includes the left mouse key so if you want to move tooltips around then then you have to have this script running as well all right so there's just a couple more things that i wanted to show you before i close the tutorial and i'm conscious of the time so i'll be really quick tooltip loop and 10 and what this is going to do is it's going to make the tooltip follow your mouse cursor by constantly showing or refreshing the tooltip in the new location which is around your mouse and tooltip i so this script if i exe exit F, if i go ahead and save it and run it this tooltip will always follow your mouse so if you need a a, a tooltip that follows your mouse this is the way you can do it and then if you want to show selected text in a tooltip then what you can do is you can create a uh, control left mouse button hotkey for example and key weight or L button to be lifted and once it gets lifted send control C to copy the text and then show a tooltip of the clipboard and remove this remove that and remove all of this now if I run this script run this script now um, if I select the any text while I press the control button and then and then and select it using the left mouse button I'm gonna get a tooltip showing up like that uh, for the text that I have selected like that and if you have a need for this you can create a script like that um, you can combine the previous script with this script to make the selected text follow your mouse cursor so what I'm going to do is instead of this, I'm going to create a variable called tooltip text and put clipboard into that. And let's run a set timer. Again, tooltip loop net for um, every 10 milliseconds. Tooltip loop return and show tooltip. And this tooltip is going to show the value stored in the tooltip text variable. Now, if I go ahead and run the script, and press control left mouse button I'll be seeing a tooltip like that following my mouse cursor and I'm just going to show a last example which I have it saved here because it's too long uh, for me to type it out in this tutorial um, so basically what this is is this is 
a combination of a tooltip timer and tooltip countdown so timer will start from one to how many seconds you specify in this variable and countdown will count down from the number of seconds so let me first begin with tooltip timer and this tooltip timer um, will run if I run the script and it show me numbers from one to five each second and then there's this line so what the difference between this line and the commented one is that the commented one if I uncomment and comment the, the first one this is going to show me up to two decimal points so uh, yep save and run it you can see that the number is increasing uh, from 0 to 5 with the decimals decimal points showing up now so that's the tooltip timer and then if I switch this out to tooltip countdown this is going to run the countdown if I save this and run it it's going to run the countdown from 5 to 1 to 1 there you go and then there are some lines commented out if I uncomment these and comment the the first first lines then this is again this is going to show up to two decimal points as the countdown is happening so if I run the script you can see that the two decimal points are, are dropping down quickly all the way down to zero second all right this is it for the tooltip tutorial thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video